Welcome. Thank you. Welcome to this fantastically large studio <laughs> that we're in. Um, you've just recently taken over as National Schools Commissioner. Tell us a bit about the job and the journey from Bristol to yeah. uh, London. Well, the National Schools Commissioner job is comfortably the best job in the education system at the moment because it's the job that's going to enable me to change the way that we think about education and, and leave a legacy for people in the future to build upon, I think. I think the exciting thing about the role is that this is about working directly with schools, directly with school leaders, with governors, um, and trying to find ways to glue all of the different elements of the system together so that they come together with one focal point on how do we create better outcomes for kids in this country. So last night, David, you were in Coolsdon uh, on your roadshow yes. of the country, uh, looking and talking with head teachers and academies about the future. Um, were you optimistic? Yeah, I'm really optimistic about it. And the roadshows were part of the very first plan that I made after I got the job um, over Christmas. In fact, I think it was Boxing Day on a walk with my wife that I thought, how do I get out to meet enough people to help them understand what I'm trying to do? And the roadshows was conceived from that idea. So we've done nine, or we will have done nine, by the end of this term, with about two and a half thousand leaders from schools attending them. So it's been a terrific response. That's the first thing I'm optimistic about. People wanted to come and hear what's happening. Uh, they want to hear the, the plan I'm trying to devise. Um, I can't impose a plan on the system. I have to develop them with the system. And the only way you do that is through discourse and, and through explaining what you're trying to do. Um, last night in Coulston was a third of nine. Uh, we're in Bristol on Friday and in Newcastle on Monday. Um, and the key thing for me is that it's the same message. I don't change the vision depending upon which region I'm talking to. It's the same thing. It's the same thing about growth. It's the same thing about leadership. But it's the same thing about standards as well. And we need to move our system from a, from a rhetoric and a discussion about, about structures into structures to deliver better outcomes. And I think if that was one of the things I've taken from the first three in terms of the feedback, either face-to-face -face or through the evaluations, it's been we like the fact you've got a plan. It's a plan we can identify. We're thinking about exactly the same things that you're thinking about and we want to come with you on this journey. So specifically were your messages for academies or are they for the whole, for the whole system? Well, they're both, they're both. I mean, the audiences on the roadshows have been academies and multi-academy trusts because I thought it was important to engage the people who are already working in this way. And I certainly intend to continue the dialogue through roadshows with the maintained sector in the autumn term. I think that's an important part of it. But my vision um, is underpinned by the concept we need one educational system, one great design. Um, the Secretary of State talks about educational excellence everywhere, and she's right. Uh, and the fact that we even talk about academies and maintain schools in different breaths and different sentences is part of our challenge. So I want one of the legacies of my role in five or six years' time to be that we no longer talk about the type of school we are, we just talk about great schools, and that we built an education system which is focused relentlessly upon giving kids better outcomes in schools. And we'll do that if we talk about classrooms, teachers and leaders up, and the system facilitates that discourse. So you majored last night uh, on teacher retention. That there needed to be a, a clear journey, I think you call it a 10-year journey, mm. for, for teachers. Um, could you just articulate us through that? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm very conscious when I'm talking about uh, to, to trust particularly that they, they have the leverage and the authority in the system to do things differently. They don't need permission. They shouldn't be asking for permission. They should just get on and do these things. And I think the retention and recruitment uh, debate is a very good example of that because uh, whilst it is clearly difficult in some parts of the country to recruit great teachers, it's not true everywhere. And it's not true in some of our multi-academy trusts, who whilst they might not get the same number of applicants they had five years ago, are getting good people. So why is that? And I think the answer to that is that they are able to paint a picture of what their career progression will look like for that new teacher. And so what I was trying to articulate last night was that the people in the room, many of whom are running multi-academy trusts, they are the people in the vanguard of this. They are the people that can reconceptualize what the first 10 years of a teacher's career is. So I think the idea of teacher training, developing and extending into your first year and your second year as a teacher, by year three, you're supporting a newly qualified teacher, by year four and year five, you may well be a lead practitioner or something like that, and you're working across the school, building a pedagogical practice in the system of your, of your organisation. Then you step into your middle leadership role, you do some senior leadership experience, probably taking on a project first before you take on a full role. And all of a sudden, the first 10 years of your career makes sense. And so where we see people leaving the profession after year three or year four, I think it's because they can't see what's next. Uh, and, we, and we have the power to do that in the system. The government should never attempt to mandate that. They, they won't do that. It's for trusts and for great leaders to say, what offer do we make to the new teachers 
that educate our children that means we really want to keep them in our trust in our schools and I think that's one idea that gets some traction. So you were arguing that there's progression routes for children as there are progression routes for adults, for, yeah. for teachers. Yeah. Well, there's progression routes in life. You know, I'm, 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 here I am in my, my mid-50s, having been teaching for 32 years this summer, starting out as a new qualified teacher uh, back in 1982 of music and PE, and here I am, National Schools Commissioner. That's a progression journey, one I never expected to take. Um, so if that's true for somebody of my experience and my career and my age, it must be true for the four-year-old, the 14-year-old, the 24-year-old and so on. So decades in teaching and now 18 months as a, a, as a civil servant. Indeed, indeed, yes, indeed. And it's been interesting. It's been a really exciting challenge. I, I really enjoy the role. The, the, the role challenges me, it stretches me. It's intellectually challenging. Uh, it's physically challenging because you can't do this job from one base in London. Um, so I've been, made a conscious attempt to be out in the regions, um, which my, my, my team will tell you is challenging because I'm often not where they want me to be. Uh, but it's a really important part of the dialogue with the system to, to talk about what, what we're trying to do. And I try to see this role through the lens of headship. So you talked about headship. Uh, 1997 was when you became a head. Yes. Uh, so you look back and you look forward. What, what keeps you going? What keeps you doing the miles that you're now doing, mm -hmm. doing the, uh, the, the conversations? What, what keeps you motivated? Well, I love the job. I love education. Um, like many people, uh, I went from school to university, back to school again. That, that's all I've ever done. I, I never had a career break. I didn't do anything different. Uh, I like the school environment. I, I love giving schools um, support. I love children being successful. My own subjects are in the arts and PE. Um, I'm passionate about those subjects. It's a big part of my life um, outside of work, uh, arts and sport. Um, and so I have a real, a real emphasis and, uh, and an energy, I think, around how do we create great education. I'm captivated by leadership. Uh, I did an MBA um, with Brent Davis and John West Burnham in the late 1990s. Mm -hmm. And whilst that's still some time ago, it still resonates with me, all that I learned about leadership beyond the school environment. Um, and I'm motivated in the final stages of my career to put something back. So you're optimistic about our education nation? I am optimistic about it because I'm optimistic about people. Um, and this education system is, is built on people and, and the capacity of people to do extraordinary things. Um, and in my experience, people don't let you down if you support and challenge and encourage them. So, David, thank you. Thank you.